Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Real Real Podcast with me, Natalie Barbu. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. I actually remembered a few solo episodes ago, I said that I wanted my YouTube videos to have a little segment that's not necessarily verbal, <laughs> um, but you can see like my cute outfits that I'm wearing kind of show it off, and I was wearing sweatpants and a sweatshirt today, and I was going to start filming, and I had no makeup on and everything like that, and I was like, you know what? I mentioned that one time, and I feel like with my solo episodes since then, I have had like a little bit of my personal style and stuff that, you know, I like to wear. So today I decided to change into something still comfy since we are just working from home and laying down. Um, and I only put blush on, so only blush and lip gloss, but I pulled my hair back, added some curls and wore this really cute set from Free People. So if you're watching, I did not forget about being presentable for you guys. I know you guys probably don't care, but I'm doing this for myself. And it kind of leads us to what we're going to talk about, which is motivating yourself. But it did motivate me, like me telling myself that I had that segment a while ago motivated me today to then look cute and like look presentable. And I just like, even though it's super comfy and loungy, I love this set so much. So I am proud of myself for sticking to that. We're doing two solo episodes in a row. I love doing these for you guys, and you guys seem to really like my solo episodes too, whether that is on YouTube or my podcast, like or audio, I guess I should say. And I want you to request more topics. Have the comment section going. Like, let's let's make this popular, you know? So today is what day is today? It's Wednesday. I have been so busy this week. This week, I've really felt like the most amount of stress and I've just had so much that I needed to do and it's been the longest time this year that I've actually stayed in Miami. So I've been in Miami all March, pretty much. I was gone the first weekend of March, but I was back by like March 2nd or something like that. So we're going to, we're not going to count that, but I've been here all of March. It's already the 27th and this is the longest time in like a few months that I have stayed in Miami and stayed put. And so I'm really happy about that. I dove into like my travel in the last episode. So if you want to hear all about that, you can. Um, but I've been super, super, super stressed and I kind of feel like I'm drowning sometimes. I'm not going to lie. I just feel like so much pressure with everything that I have to do and everything going on. And I put a lot of pressure on myself too. But I think when you own a business and you have other people that are working with you, the pressure is not just like for you to, you know, get something done. It's like you have a bunch of people relying on you. And I think that added pressure just, it, it exaggerates everything. But I wanted to talk today about how to motivate yourself and how to stay self-motivated because that is probably the number one question that I get asked is how do you motivate yourself or like how do you not burn out? How do you, you know, stay the course? And this is something that I have worked on my entire life. Like I feel like I've always been someone that has motivated myself really easily and I think I have been given the gift if I can call it that, to motivate others and to encourage other people. And I talked about this in my last episode too. And we're going to kind of do a, another another part of not necessarily the same coin, but similar. So if you liked my impulsive episode, you'll definitely like this one. But how do you motivate yourself and how do you stay motivated? And for context, I quit my job five years ago, which is crazy that it's already been five years. I quit my job in 2019 and I was working at Accenture, which is a consulting company. It's a huge corporation, big company. And I was working there for only nine months before I could quit because I was making more money on social media than I was at my job at Accenture. And so I decided to quit that to pursue, you know, my my own thing full time. And so I have been working for myself for the past five years. And even before then, though, like when I was in high school, when I was in college, although I had other jobs and I did other things like in college, I remember I had an internship in high school. I've been working ever since I was 16 years old at, you know, other companies and stuff. I always had my own stuff that I was doing on the side. Like I always had my side hustle, which was content creation. I always tried to start random little businesses and I was always very entrepreneurial and I would, I would motivate myself for that reason. It was a lot harder for me to motivate myself when it came to things that I didn't necessarily want to do. Like when I was in engineering and I had to study for all my classes, that was a bit more difficult, but I still think that I am someone that can motivate myself very easily. And I've noticed that not everyone is like that. And trust me, there are things that like 
I need so much help with on like other things, but motivating myself, I think is something that I am so grateful for um, that I've been able to do. And so I want to give you tips on how I do it so that hopefully you can listen to this if you're feeling close to burning out, if you're feeling stuck, if you're in a rut. I hope that this episode helps you. And instead of doing this long intro that I normally do, I feel like we caught up last week. So if you kind of want to, if you want to catch up on my life or you want to kind of hear what's new, I would definitely recommend listening to last week's vlog because I did like a much needed catch up in the first 15 minutes because we hadn't had a solo episode in a really long time. But since we just had one last week, I'm just going to dive into the episode and talk to you guys about the number one question I get asked, which is how I stay motivated. And hopefully this episode can inspire you as well. So the first thing that I want to say before we dive into how to stay motivated um, is to address the fact that it's okay to not be motivated. And hopefully if you're listening to this, you know, you realize that. But I feel like if you're listening to this, you're probably in this point where you're like, okay, I'm kind of starting to burn out. I'm not very motivated. I'm in a rut. And you inherently think that that is the problem. You're like, wait, why am I not motivated? Like what's wrong with me? And if you don't think that, great, but I know that that's how I feel sometimes whenever I am, you know, trying to like hype myself up again. And so for me, the one thing that I've realized is that it is totally fine to not be motivated and not be inspired all the time. We talk about this a lot as co-founders, but we go through lulls so often and we and and it's never it's never like all three of us at the same time it's like my co-founder might be going you, you know through a lull at one time and then I'm going through it and then but we all do it that's kind of like the main message is we all do it and we all go through it at different points and it's not going to be the same for everyone but it's okay to recognize that that's going to happen and that's fine I think that you when you do you know start to kind of get like unmotivated, discouraged, you have to pull things out of the arsenal that are going to re-inspire, reinvigorate, and re-motivate you. And in order to do that, you have to know what those things are. And so I'm going to tell you what they are for me because maybe they might help you. But if I feel like everyone's everyone is different and I feel like you know what it is that will re-motivate you. Like for example, if what motivates you is something that's going to give you energy, something that's going to make you feel inspired. It's not something that's going to make you feel insecure, less than, and lazy, beat yourself up over it. You know what I'm saying? So for example, for me, when it comes to motivation with my job, which my job relies very heavily on content creation, whether that's Rella or whether that is, you know, my podcast or my YouTube channel or short form content like Instagram and TikTok, it requires content. So one of the things that motivates me is actually consuming more content and being a consumer. I've talked to other creators though that say that is the opposite, that that actually like discourages them because they're then in a comparison mindset. So what works for me might not work for you, but what is it that you do? Like start recognizing the patterns and it doesn't have to do with work. Like it doesn't always have to do with work. So, but what are the patterns that make you excited to like do something, you know, and it doesn't have to be exactly like your work or anything like that. This is just talking about motivation in general. So what is it that you do on a weekly, monthly daily basis where you're like oh wow like this excites me this is what I want to get back to doing and not after the fact feeling crappy about yourself so for example for me I love to be a consumer when I am unmotivated with my YouTube channel or when I'm unmotivated with my short form content or my podcast or anything like that I'm always like okay what can I consume even for Rella I'm like okay what other companies can I look at or what can I you know what are the things that I can start looking at for inspiration and that inspires me but if that's not you and you're scrolling and you're you know watching videos and you're comparing yourself and then you feel worse because you're like wow they're so ahead of it why can't I be like that then that's not going to be the thing that motivates you I choose to view other content other people other businesses as inspiration where it's like wow if they can do that that means I can do that and it's not to say that you're copying them or anything like that at least in my case it's not it's to show what can be and it can show like what potent the potential that I do have and it then like makes my brain kind of start turning and say like okay I can then you know do this with my content or I can start a series that's like this and it just motivates me and inspires me so that's one of the things that I can do another thing for me is stepping away from the computer and again this is something that it doesn't have to do with work like if you step away from the computer you're not working oh my god god forbid that happens 
that is a good thing. I need to step away from the computer if I am going to re-motivate myself. I need to go on a walk. I need to hang out with a friend. I need to go and like do something that doesn't require work. I need to put my phone away. I don't want to like scroll and consume content. Like I want to do something that is I'm like in nature or, you know, doing something that is has nothing to do with work. And so that's why my weekends are so important for me because even though there are weekends where I do have to work, I really have tried to use my weekends as my off time because that way Monday through Friday I am on and I can like get stuff done versus if you are viewing every single day of the week as a work day, which I know there is going to be seasons where you might have to do that. I think it's really easy then to kind of like burn yourself out and crash and then not want to do anything for a much longer period of time versus taking those two days off and then, you know, five days on. And I feel like your productivity levels are going to be so much higher when it matters. And so I really try to view to view like Monday through Friday as my working time and not to say that I don't go out to dinner with friends or, you know, last night I went to the heat game, but I really try to like get all the stuff that I need to get done those days and then take time off and step away from my computer. And it's really, it's it's been super healthy for me because during the times when I don't do that, when I'm like working 24 seven and I've talked to my co-founder about this too, it, it starts, you just start to kind of like, I, I don't even want to say burn yourself out because that's like the most common word for it. But you kind of start looking at the world with like glass half empty mindset. Like you are putting in all this work and you're not necessarily seeing the result of it right away. And it's because you're not giving yourself that time to breathe and you're putting way too much pressure on yourself. At least that's how it is for me. So taking time to step away, even though it feels unproductive, is really important because rest is still productive. And I don't know who needs to hear that because I think I needed to hear that like a year ago, two years ago, because I used to think if I was resting, if I wasn't working, then I was lazy and I wasn't productive and I didn't deserve, you know, the success that I had or the success that I wanted. Like I was like, you're never going to get there because look at these other people who, you know, you want to be as successful as them. Well, you're not going to be because you're not putting in the exact work that they're doing. And it's a lie. Our, we are not made to work 24-7 and to be slaves to our jobs or to be slaves to our career. And if someone wants to do that, that's fine. They can do that. But that's not going to be me and that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be successful. And so recognizing that and recognizing how important rest is so that you are actually productive in the long haul is super, super important. And then another thing, like I was mentioning, how me and my co-founders, we all go through kind of these like lulls and these moments when we're not feeling motivated is to talk to other people in the same industry as you or in the same space as you, whatever it is that you're like not motivated in, whatever path that is, talk to people that are in that same similar space because they are going to lift you up when you are down. Not everyone is going to be at the same level every time and you're going to need to be the person that lifts someone else up when they're down. And so there's going to be moments when someone needs to lift you up too. And that's why like I love having my co-founders because whenever I'm feeling a certain way, like I can talk to them and they understand what I'm going through. Or when it comes to content creation, I have some content creator friends that I get so inspired when I talk to them when I'm feeling unmotivated. Like I, I just know there's so many creator friends of mine that we have talked to. We've been like, oh my God, I'm feeling so uninspired. One of my friends, Jen, she's on TikTok. She's on YouTube. She has a podcast. And in the beginning of the year, end of last year, I don't even know when we talked, but we were just both talking about like feeling super unmotivated and we were sharing creators that we like to follow and things that we wanted to do this year. And I'm not kidding. That conversation like catapulted my motivation when it came to YouTube. Like you have her to thank for like my motivation on YouTube this year because that one conversation alone helped me so much. And I hope that conversations I've had with people have also helped them out. And I hope that this podcast is one of those things for you because surrounding yourself with people who just get it, like get what you're doing is going to make you feel so validated with how you're feeling and then you're they're going to encourage you to get back up and like keep at it and like you're going to do the same for them and it's going to help so 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 much so if you are someone that's like you know I got this I can do everything by myself I don't need community I don't need friends I would highly 
recommend questioning that because it's not about like needing people because you can't do it on your own. It's about finding that community that is going to help you and re-motivate you. So that's definitely one of the steps that I would take. The next is to reverse engineer what you're trying to to do or who you're trying to be, what success looks like for you. So for me, I look at it as having this successful company that, you know, gets acquired for a lot of money and then I'm able to, you know, sell, do my own thing, continue to do social media, continue to make money off my personal brand, do something else, like be a serial entrepreneur. That is like my goal. And with that, what do I have to do to get there? And I've, like I've mentioned earlier, I don't want to continue to like compare myself to other founders that are like slaves to their job because that's not what I want to do. But it's what do I, Natalie Barbu, have to do to get to that point? And a lot of times the reason why we're unmotivated is because we don't know what to do. We don't know what the first step is. We don't know where do we where do we go next? Like what I, I'm lost. And so whenever I start looking at it that way, I'm like, okay, what's the goal? And you can look at big picture goal and then you can break it down into smaller goals and kind of reverse and engineer your way like backwards that's one way to do it and that's one way to do it with more like realistic tangible steps like for me it's like okay to create this successful company what do I need to do I need to raise money how am I going to raise money here's what I need to do okay what does that mean okay then this is my to-do list item from there so I like reverse engineer it rather than just being like today's a new day I have a million paths to take what am I going to do next because I most people have a never-ending list of things that they could do, but not everything is going to lead you to the most productive path. Like there's so many little little tasks and little things that you can do that aren't going to move the needle forward. So when you think about, you know, being like unmotivated because you just don't even know which direction to go in, start thinking about it big picture and reverse engineer your way back to what do you need to do in this exact moment? And that has helped me a ton with feeling confident that I'm at least like taking a step in the right direction if that makes sense and then other times it is just a mental block and you just need to persevere and you need to push through so what I mean by this is a lot of times we're unmotivated and we don't want to do anything and like let's say for social media or content creation I'm using that because that's like the best example that I know but please put in your own like industry or field or whatever it is you want to do like in 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 place of it But a lot of times I'll be like, oh, I just haven't filmed a TikTok. Like, let's talk about me for a second. Let's point the finger back at me because I need this pep talk myself when it comes to like creating short form videos. I have a list of 30 videos, you guys, 30 videos that I paid like $400 for. Like I had someone, was it 400? I don't know. It was, it was a ton of money. That's not the only reason. That's not all I paid for. There were other things too. But to come up with a strategy, to come up with a bunch of ideas, to give me a bunch of inspiration, to put everything in a calendar, blah, 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 all this stuff. I haven't done like any of them yet. Any of them. Not only did I invest money, not only did I try to invest, like I I pursued help from someone else. Like I did all of these steps. Like I reverse engineered it. I was like, okay, in order to, you know, get to this many followers or to make this much money on social media, I need to start posting this many times. And I reverse engineered it. I talked to other people in the industry. I, you know, like was chatting with them and being like, okay, please motivate me. And that helped. And then I got the stuff that I need to do. And the only thing that has stopped me is me. I have not filmed a single one of them. Why? Like, question to ask myself why have I not done it and a lot of times it's just in my head where it's like it's literally all you have to start doing is making it a practice and start doing it so I guarantee if I filmed five TikToks in a row five of those TikToks in a row right now I would have the motivation to continue it out for the month. But the hardest part is to just start and to be consistent and to keep those promises to yourself. And so I'm going to need to hear this out because I know it's hard like that's why I'm like filming this episode because like I know it is hard to motivate yourself and I know that it's hard to get things done but half the time the reason why things aren't getting done is because of you and I'm pointing the finger to me too you know it's like we are not prioritizing and we're not putting in the time and that's the reason why we're not doing it but I guarantee the second we take those first steps the second we stay consistent for five days let's say that motivation can carry us out through the rest of the month and I full-heartedly believe that and I'm pumping myself up guys I'm gonna start filming more content (laughs) 
Mark my words. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok because content is coming your way. Do not forget it. (laughs) So sometimes it's literally just your own your own actions that are getting in the way. Another thing that I will say when it comes to motivation and how to self-motivate or how to motivate yourself. Why can't I say that? It's like so hard for me to say in a sentence. How to motivate yourself is a lot of times myself included like please keep in mind everything I'm saying I am including myself in this like this is what I need to hear a lot of times we place our value on numbers so whether that's likes whether it's follower count whether it's money in the bank whether it's salaries like anything like that we place our value on numbers instead of placing it on how we feel when we complete something or how we feel when we get to the end goal. So instead of saying like, dang, I put in all this effort and I like didn't grow on social media. Why are you doing what you're doing? Like if the reason is to just increase your numbers, I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be hard. It will be hard. But if your reason is for, you know, because you feel really great after you accomplish this, because you're going to be proud of yourself, because you're going to feel fulfilled. And I'll, I'll give it to you like in examples, because I know that can be like really cheesy. So for me, for example, with Rella, there's a lot of times when I question and I'm like, why am I not just an influencer? And that's it. I'm not going to lie. I question it a lot. I am not getting paid on Rella right now. Like I stopped getting paid until we raise money. I'm making zero dollars from Rella myself personally. I've invested tens of thousands of dollars in Rella myself personally. And I sometimes wonder and I'm like, why am I not just an influencer? That's where all my money is coming from now. I could spend more time doing it and make more money if I didn't do, you know, start a business. And this is a very real and honest take. It's not to say I regret it at all because I don't. The reason why I'm not is because I am so fulfilled with what I'm doing. With Rella, it fulfills me. I am so proud of myself. It's one of the coolest things I've ever done. And aside from that, I genuinely believe we are helping the industry and we're helping people and we're saving them time. People like myself where I now can juggle being a founder and also being an influencer because I have a system in place and this tool that I've created that is allowing me to do that and it's genuinely helping other people. And so that is my why. It's not about how much like the numbers necessarily of like how much money am I am I making on Rella, if that makes sense. Like of course I'm doing this to make money in the end, don't get me wrong, but that is in the day to day, that's not what's motivating me. The day to day what's motivating me is my sense of accomplishment, my sense of fulfillment and my helping people and talking to our users and talking to our customers. Another thing, another example, I was talking to my friend about this, who she has been posting on TikTok and she's been posting TikToks about her coffee shop and it's bring, bringing so many people to her coffee shop, which has been great. And then she's like, I, but when I post them on Instagram, I get like no likes and it's just like not worth it. And I'm like, but the reason that you want to start posting these TikToks is to like spread the word and to get people to come to your coffee shop because that is your passion and that is like what you love and that is what makes you happy and that's what makes you fulfilled. And so who cares if it gets five likes on Instagram? It's not like you're doing that much more work. You're just like repurposing it, you know? And then it, it's bringing people, it might br- bring people to your coffee shop. Like the reason why she's posting on TikTok is because like it's bringing people and then that's, you know, going into her why which is why she started her coffee shop and all of this stuff and her sense of like feeling accomplished she's not like consistent on tiktok to get a bunch of likes or on instagram to get a bunch of likes it's for something much bigger and so what is that for you you know like even with my podcast with my youtube channel there's a lot of times and it kind of goes back to like why am i not just an influencer there's a lot of times when i'm like i could post about my life. I could vlog daily and that's it. But like, what's the point? Like, I want to help people. I want to create content that I wish I had when I was, you know, watching on YouTube or like that. Not when I was the content I want to watch on YouTube. I want to motivate people. I want to encourage more people to, you know, do their own thing and to go for it and to make people feel like no matter who they are, they can accomplish something. And like, that's my why for my content. It's, if I wanted to, I could just like post like, here's what I'm eating every day. And here's, you know, my makeup and blah, blah, blah. And don't get me wrong. I post that. Like, I post that. But 
it goes into a greater mission, I guess, and a greater why for me, where it's like, that's not all I want my content to be about. I want my content to have some value in it. And that's, that's my why. So like, even if it doesn't do that well currently, I know that it's helping people. And even if it's a few people, like my why has been fulfilled and that motivates me. If my only motivation was to gain followers and to make a ton of money, I would have given up a long time ago. So I hope that makes sense when it's like, don't tie it to numbers. And a lot of times when it comes to motivation also, especially if you're someone like me who like works for yourself and, you know, you can make your own schedule and you can, you know, do whatever you want or anything like that. Like on, let's say you're working for another job, but on the, you want to get motivated with your side hustle and on the weekends you're waking up at 10 p or 10 a.m. and, you know, you're going out with your friends and all of this stuff. I think a lot of times we feel worse when we say we're going to do something and then we never do it. And that's like kind of what I talked about in my confidence building episode where you gain confidence by keeping promises to yourself and like getting out of your comfort zone. Well, I think the opposite is true for like how do you lose motivation by not doing the things that you said you were going to do. So for me, I haven't been posting on TikTok and I am now losing motivation to post on TikTok because I haven't been. And it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Is that the right expression for it? I think. Um, And so if I want to stay, get motivated again, then I need to keep those promises and start doing the things that I said I was going to do. And that just goes kind of what I was talking about. We're like, you just got to do it. That simple. I know it's not actually that simple, but it's that simple in theory. And then also another thing I wanted to touch on, which is what I was saying, how I have like my weekends off and I hang out with my friends or like last night I went to the heat game on a Tuesday night, you know, whatever it is. I have rewarded myself when I do keep those promises. I stayed until the office until 7 p.m. I accomplished my to-do list for the most part. (laughs) Of course, there's a never-ending list, but I accomplished the things that I wanted to get done that day. And I rewarded myself by going out with my friend and going to a basketball game. And that that's why I didn't feel guilty when I did that because I rewarded myself for the day and so when you know that you have something exciting coming up you know that you have something to do like reward yourself for it I have plans to go to Europe in May and we need to be done fundraising in that time because that is my reward for when we are done fundraising and so I'm like so excited for it so I think that's the thing is you need to reward yourself as well because if you just work 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 you're going to lose interest, you're going to lose motivation, and you're going to get discouraged. And so I hope this episode was an episode where it has motivated you, it has inspired you, you're feeling accomplished, you want to get stuff done. And one of my favorite quotes that I have been, I've always, like, this has always been on the top list of my favorite quotes, has been dreams only work if you do. And it's just so true because so many times we have all of these dreams and we have these things we want to accomplish, but we're not doing anything about them. And it's nice to have a dream, but they're only going to work if you put in the work. And so I have lived by that quote and I hope that it's helped someone listening to this. So I know this was kind of like a rapid fire episode where I just like bam, bam, bam listed all my points out, but it was something that like I desperately needed to hear, especially because this week has been a busy week and I have used every single thing that I told you in this episode, I put it in practice this week to help get me through it. And it's only Wednesday, so pray for me, guys. (laughs) Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know it, it felt quick, but I think it was still like 25 to 30 minutes long. I hope that you enjoyed it. I would love to know any other solo episodes or any other episodes you want to hear from me. And I will see you guys next week with another episode of The Real Real Podcast. Bye, guys.